Welcome into the BSN Avalanche Weekly Breakdown presented by Bender's Bar and Grill. This is Jim Armstrong, former sports columnist at the Denver Post. These days, I own Bender's up in Westminster in the Westminster Promenade Ice Center. If you don't think we're the preeminent hockey bar in the metro area, you haven't seen the framed original six jerseys above the bar. We have poutine on the menu. That must make us a hockey bar. All kinds of good stuff on the menu. Come on up to Bender's and check us out. I'm Allie Monroy, and alongside me is a new face, BSN Avalanche beat writer A.J. Haefeli. Welcome, A.J. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> All right, A.J., the Colorado Avalanche lost 3-2 in a shootout Tuesday night against the New York Rangers. With that loss, they currently sit at 3-1-2 and two on the year. What was one positive and one negative you took away from that game? Well, I mean, positive, you want to start with goaltending, right? Yeah. Because Semyon Varlamov was, again, exceptional when they needed him to be. And then when they didn't need him to be, he was still exceptional. So, you know, when he, he gets you through a first period in which the Avalanche were outshot 19-7, to and he stood, he stood tall. He kept a minute, you know. He, he withstood the barrage, and uh, they ended up giving up 40 shots, a little over 40 shots after overtime. And... The only ones that beat him was a, a deflection from the point and a perfectly placed rocket from Kevin Hayes. And so, you know, that's you can live with that on any given night. I mean, giving up two goals on 40 shots, that's pretty impressive. Um, he's he's continued to be just excellent for them. I mean, to be honest, I mean, they're, he's, he's been a top-five goaltender to start the season across the league, and he's a big reason why they've picked up eight of their, their first 12 points that they had available to them. So it was... It was really just a, a goaltender battle, and, you know, Varley came up one save short, but he's the biggest reason they got a point. And I would say that a negative would have to be the, he had to face a barrage of shots in the first period. I mean, that's coming, especially coming off the way that they totally fell apart on Saturday against the Calgary Flames in, a, in that overtime loss. Um coming right out of the first period and immediately laying a gigantic egg on the ice like that was really unimpressive, and it was really uninspiring. Uh, this is a team that last year, you know, kind of made its bones on perseverance and, and, and not stringing together bad performances, and that first period really kind of made you nervous that, that they were going to start falling into some older habits and, and that this might have been, you know, a precursor to something much worse and, uh, you know, Fortunately, they turned it around, but, you know, the New York Rangers are not a great team. And uh, giving, up, giving up the opportunity to grab two points from them, I mean, you're happy to get the one. I mean, kind of happy is sort of like a middle-of-the-road happy, like you got a sweater for Christmas kind of happy. <laughs> like, great, it keeps you warm, but you want Christmas presents to be cooler than that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's one point. Like, you'll take it, right? So it, it, it could have been a lot worse, but... Come the end of the year, if, if they miss the playoffs by one or two points, this is going to be one of the ones that you look back and you say, boy, getting the Rangers early in the season sure would have been nice to grab that extra point. Well, the Avs continue their four-game road trip on Thursday night against the New Jersey Devils. They then travel to North Carolina to face off against the Hurricanes on Saturday, and they will finish things off Monday in Philly against the Flyers. AJ, what are a few key things you'll be watching for in these matchups? Well, I would say against New Jersey, uh, they've, they've played four games and they've given up four goals. So you need to pre need to be able to generate a little more offense than the previous four, four teams have been able to. Um, has the, the recent history against the New Jersey hasn't been great. It's kind of a stylistic nightmare for them. Um, and, and with the Devils kind of on the up and up, you, you really do kind of worry about some of, uh, some of the matchup problems that they can give you. Um, the upside is is that their goaltenders right now, I mean, they're rolling out Eddie Lack and Keith Kincaid, who um, not not a great duo, to be honest with you. Uh, if Corey Schneider comes back, I'm not, I don't know what his status is, but if he's back, he's for real, and you got to look out for him. But um, really generating offense against New Jersey is going to be where it's at, and where they had problems last year was special teams. They... Uh, they gave up a bunch of power play goals against the Devils, even a shorthanded goal. Um, really just not, uh, the special teams really decided uh, the game in Jersey last year. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be important for the Avs to, to definitely try and stay out of the penalty box against them. Their power play is really good. Um, I believe Will Butcher got hurt, so um, I'm not sure if he plays tomorrow or not. So 
Uh, that may help them if they do continue their run of uh, undisciplined play that they've had to start the year. Uh, but definitely, you got to stay out of the box against that team because easy opportunities for a team that's going to struggle to generate offense at 5v5, you can't open the door for them. And then generating your own offense against a team that's only given up four goals in four games, you got to be ready. And then, um, you know, taking on Carolina, kind of kind of the opposite, really. Carolina's been... Their, their goaltending still very shaky after years and years and years of them trying to figure it out. But their offense has been downright explosive to start the season. They've been one of the fun fun stories to watch uh, early on in the NHL this year. Um, as they, you know, a lot of people predicted them to make the, the, the jump to legitimate playoff team after they've kind of been on the bubble the last few years. Um, and they've, they've, been, they've been good. And they've been fun to watch. And they've been exciting. And they're playing a brand of hockey that, that Carolina really hasn't ever seen. So, uh, I, I would say defensively, they're going to have to be on top of their game. They, they can't have the same kind of puck management issues that they've had in the last couple of games. They've, they've got to really lock it down defensively against the Hurricanes. And they've already played the Flyers this year. Yeah. So, repeat that. And, you know, just kind of <laughs> copy, and, copy and paste. You know, you got to watch out for their top guys. Um, they've had some injuries since then. So, their offense isn't quite as dangerous. Uh, but their their defense remains uh, pretty talented, and and they've got a variety of, of play styles on the back end that can that can get to you. So you've got to be able to attack them in in different ways. Um, and their goaltending is not good. It's the classic Philly problem, really. Like the Flyers, over and over and over, they've been trying to solve their goaltending issues for almost as long as I've been alive, and they haven't done it yet. I mean, they're they're still. I mean, Calvin Pickard's still playing there. So, and you know, all love to picks, but not an NHL caliber goaltender and he keeps getting lit up and that's no surprise. So that's that's a game that um just based on a goaltending matchup and regardless if it's Varley or Grubauer, um Colorado should have the advantage in net the rest of this trip. And uh that's that's a huge key for them. They're they're gonna be able to lean on that in a way that their opposition is not going to be able to. Well be sure to follow all of our game coverage on BSNDenver.com for AJ Hayfley, I'm Ali Monroy, BSN Denver. If you're a football fan or a hockey fan, you got to check out Bender's off of Highway 36, just off of Church Ranch Boulevard. 32 beers on tap, served in chilled glasses. We're a watch site for Coloradans for Nebraska and Steeler Nation of North Denver. So if you're a Husker fan or a Steeler fan, you're a recent transplant to Denver, come on up to Bender's and check us out.